No, I don't think you're misleading. Uh, they're very being very frank with the public. Uh, it, I don't think there was a, a thunderous, uh, a lot of news in the release of this report last week. Um, most people didn't notice, uh, but nonetheless, they, I have to give them credit for being honest. Uh, but if you read the report, it forecasts failure. Uh, unusual, but uh, frank and honest. Well, the, you know, the question is that, you know, we're in Copenhagen, they're talking more ambitious targets than, than we are here. It's, it's difficult, that's sort of a policy question about where we're going with targets. Uh, and, you know, I'm probably going to deal with that in later reports because I, I don't want to be too critical of, of the government's targets in this report because they were set in 2007 before we knew what we know about the science now. So in fairness, we're reviewing those numbers. We're saying, you know, 15% in 20, uh, 2020 is, is inadequate by today's standards. But it wasn't inadequate in 2007. So in fairness to the government, I'll accept their target, uh, and we'll have the discussion about possibly uh, meeting more rigorous targets uh, at a later date. But it doesn't really matter anyway because they're not forecasting to meet the 15%. So uh, it's moot. So, you know, what, so what happens if they come back and increase the target to 20% or 25% perhaps, because that's what the scientists are, are saying. Uh, and I think that's the point I'm trying to get across is that, uh, you know, we, the whole focus, even internationally, is on this whole thing about setting targets and what the numbers are going to be and what do we commit to. The reality is, here we have modest targets and we haven't got the tools in the, in the kit to meet them. We haven't figured out how to, how to change, how to do business differently, how to live our lifestyles differently and how to make our economy function differently such that our greenhouse gas emissions are, are lower. So the targets, I don't want to diminish the targets and their importance. They are important because they're targets and they set an objective. But the, the, the story here is that we have to find the ways to change. We have opportunities. We're not utilizing them. So it doesn't really matter what the target is if you're, if you're on a, a course to miss the target. They've talked about tightening building codes and encouraged uh, transportation demand management, uh, new electric vehicles and such things. Those are built in. Those, those, that's what you're seeing here on the transportation side. You're seeing the initiatives here up to 2020 that, uh, that they've been doing, which are, are good and laudable, but, but not enough. And then this is the building code type stuff. Uh, this is the energy efficiency buildings. But look at the opportunity here that we have because, of course, we have a huge built-up infrastructure of old and energy inefficient buildings. And we don't have any large schemes to address that. So yes, those are built in. Questions of cost, of course, you know, to summary outside the, the framework of the, of the report I'm reporting on, but, but I mean, let's, let, how much will it cost to do nothing? That's a question for Copenhagen, and how much will it cost uh, if the world does not respond? It, let's face it, in this big scheme of things, Ontario is not, in, in the global sense, not a huge emitter of greenhouse gas, our per capita our precise economy, but not in terms of, of the global emissions, but we have responsibility to, to respect the global agreements and where we're going and, and, and participate and contribute accordingly to our, to our, our size uh, in, in the global uh, affairs because the impacts are global and, and the impacts of the costs, yes, the costs, they're costs to us, but there are huge costs to people in the Maldives that are, are losing their, literally losing the land that they live on. There are huge costs in Bangladesh. If, if we have storm surge coming in, displacing hundreds of millions of people, there are huge costs in, in some of the drier areas where the crops are failing. It's one of those, you know, those intractable problems we have in the world where, uh, you know, we have to decide whether we are going to incur some costs and, you know, contribute and, and the way we change the way we do business and live, or we're going to ignore that and let uh, others uh, far more disadvantaged pay the costs. I try not to be too prescriptive of the government, but I mean, there are some obvious things. There are some, some initiatives, transportation demand management initiatives in the United States are much more aggressive. Road pricing is used. Let's face it, we have to use the, the terrible toll word, word, but that those are the kind of measures that do reduce the amount of uh, vehicular traffic and the amount of consumption of uh, fuels, those things. In the building sector, uh, bold initiatives in, in retrofitting older uh, buildings. We have, you know, some modest initiatives now, but much, much more opportunity there. Huge energy savings, uh, as well as, as greenhouse gas uh, savings, uh, with some bold initiatives in, in buildings. There's just a couple of examples. And, of course, in industry, uh, we, we have to get on with either cap and trade or, or some, uh, or, you know, the, the usual thing, the, the carbon tax, or the, the cap and trade, or, or uh, regulated uh, uh, reductions based on pollution levels.
My job is to speak for the environment. It's not that we'll, the, the people in the Legislative Assembly have the, the tough job in, in deciding what we're going to do about it. You're saying in the states with tolls that's made a huge difference. Can you point well, it? Well, yes. I mean, it's not just tolls. It's it's a transportation demand management thing where you where you have, you know, specialized lanes. You have you you get transit. You have to put in the buses and, and the transit alternatives as well as uh, the tolls to shift people from. You can't just you can't just charge them. You got to give them the alternatives, right? You got to build the alternative things so people can get to work or go, do do what they're going to do, and then you help that shift occur by by using tools. The government here has HOV lanes that yeah. have these green license plates. If you drive a Prius, I mean, are, are these just sort of? Uh, well, they're, they're good things. Uh, it's interesting. That's there's an interesting thing. The, the question is, the government has the HOV lanes and the green license plates in these initiatives. They're modest. They're small. They're good, uh, and and I encourage them. It's interesting that. They don't highlight them in their report. They don't say, uh, look at this, and here's the, they mention the HOV lens, for instance, but they, they don't say, it, it, and it is saving this, this much greenhouse gas. I think they could. I think they could quantify some things. I could think they could work some of these harder, and they would see, you would see a, a feedback and some return, some justification for it. But uh, for, they, they just sort of talk about HOV lanes, but they don't put any numbers on it. 